Hello everyone, welcome to another time-lapse sketching tutorial. As usual, this video is the condensed version of the full-length tutorial that I have made for my patrons. So if you guys want to check out the full tutorial, you can support me on Patreon. Alright, so for this tutorial, we will be sketching this Buddhist monastery that I discovered a few months ago while I was passing by the neighborhood. I didn't even know that this building existed until I went past it uh, on a bus. And it's a very beautiful building. It's a compound with several buildings. I wanted to go back there to sketch this building, but unfortunately with the pandemic situation, it's not possible. So that's why I'm using Google Earth instead. Google Earth, by the way, it's an app that's available on iOS, Android, and also on desktop. So I'm using this to find, I'm using this app to find a perfect composition. I want to find a composition that allows me to see the main building. Now, if I go too high up into the sky, it's going to make it feel like I am sketching from a tall building. So I would like to go down closer to the ground, preferably at the same height as the uh, monastery so that I can still see the monastery and I can see what's happening on the ground. So that would be a good composition in my opinion. The thing with Google Earth is you can just uh, pan around in 3D space to look for uh, the best composition. Alright, so by the way, if you guys want to like follow along, you can download the screenshot that I have made, which will be in the video description below. So alright, this is going to be the view that I am going to sketch. So this is where I'm going to take a screenshot so that I won't move the scene accidentally later on with my fingers. This is a customized sketchbook that is made by my friend. It's made with 100% cotton watercolor paper and it comes with a custom cloth cover. By the way, if you guys want to uh, find out who made that sketchbook, you can visit the link in the video description below. Um, the artist is based in Singapore, so it's going to be quite expensive to ship that sketchbook overseas. All right, so for the sketch, I'm starting out with pencil to draft the position and the shapes of the buildings because this is a rather complicated scene. There are a lot of buildings, a lot of details, so I'm using pencil to make it easier for me to ink later on. And at this stage, if I discover I have any uh, mistakes, like mistakes with placement, composition, or proportion, or even perspective, later on while inking, I can correct those mistakes. So using pencils, I mean, I still use pencils. This is a panorama seat. So later on when inking, I'm going to try and ink from the left side to the right side. The most important subject for this sketch is of course this uh, main building for the monastery. And I need to make sure that I include the whole monastery as well. When sketching outdoors, this will be the first thing that I sketch as well. In case the weather changes, um, I can quickly pack up my supplies and leave, but at least I will have the sketch of the main monastery on the paper. So always sketch the most important things first. And now I'm working my way to the left side, the supporting structures, the supporting buildings on the left side. When drawing, it's good to have uh, the main subject as well as secondary subjects so that you can get some sort of perspective. So for example, I'm drawing the main building. With the main building and secondary buildings, the secondary, the secondary buildings will let you get an idea on how of how big the main building is. And you can add things like trees, people walking on the streets, cars, those secondary subjects. They will also give you an idea on how big the main subject is. 
This is a very quick sketch. I am not drawing with a lot of details because, uh, first of all, this is an A5 size sketchbook, so it would be impossible to draw all the details. And secondly, the reference photo, the reference screenshot that I have taken from Google Earth, it's not particularly high res, so sometimes it can be a bit difficult to work with low resolution photos. So for areas where I cannot see clearly, then I would have to sort of uh, fake it a bit, try to imagine what the structure would be like, especially for places where the text is overlaying the building and for the really low res or very blur areas. Those areas I would have to use my imagination to I guess what uh, how, how the structure looks. There is this uh, stupa building on the right side, that's very nice. It provides a nice contrast to the main monastery building. So we have this sharp, uh, sharper stupa, and then we have the flat main building. For the background, as you can see, there are a lot of residential blocks, and these residential blocks or flatted factories, they are very far away in the background. The windows are so tiny that it would be impossible to draw the windows. So usually I would represent those windows with tiny little dots or I would use vertical lines or horizontal lines to represent rows of windows. Or sometimes I may just leave them blank. I would just draw the outline of the buildings in the background, like the skyline, and then later on paint the skyline or those buildings with watercolor and use uh, watercolor to suggest the windows. I'm using a limited color palette that consists of yellow, um, orange, red, blue, and green. So it's like this five uh, colors. It doesn't really matter which specific color you use, as long as it's a primary color, you can use it to uh, mix all the other colors that you see. So I usually start out with yellow, start out with the lightest colors first. And when it comes to painting, washes, color mixes, I try to have color blends like, in this case for the roofs, I have yellow blend into new gumbosh, the orange, and for um, I mean, have new gumbosh blend into the red. This is to create a visual interest. If the wash is made of a flat color, it's going to look kind of boring and it's going to look very stylistic like uh, comic coloring. So with watercolor, you have the flexibility to have the colors blend. That's the beauty of watercolor, you can have the colors blend very beautifully into other colors. Another way to create visual interest is to have concentrated colors blend into less concentrated colors. So that's a technique that I am trying to use nowadays. So notice for the windows, um, I'm just painting using horizontal stripes. Those are actually the roofs for the windows. And for the windows, it's ultramarine with a brown. So the last stage is to paint the really dark areas, um, the areas under the shadows, areas that are black. The brush that I'm using, by the way, is the silver black, silver black velvet. Yeah, it's a small brush for a small sketchbook. So when painting large washes, I use a squirrel brush. For painting details like this, I will need a smaller brush. And this is sort of like the last stage where I use the white gel pen to add in the pedals for the buildings, which are white, and also for certain areas for highlights. Here's a close up. So for the faraway buildings in the background, I'm using dots and vertical lines and horizontal lines to represent the windows. In reality, if you were to look at the buildings in real life, the windows are going to be way smaller. But with art, you can use um, you can use your own artistic license to represent those windows. So I'm using the dots uh, like 
that, which are actually way, way bigger than how small the windows are in real life. But when people look at those dots, when people look at a horizontal line or horizontal stroke of uh, watercolor, they may associate it with windows. So that's the beauty of art. This sketch probably took me one and a half hours to draw and paint. So it's a very quick and loose sketch. I have to finish this sketch and uh, finish the recording before Tiffany wakes up because when she wakes up, she's going to grab my pen, pencil, my brush, whatever she can lay her hands on. So I have to finish this recording before she wakes up. The white gel pen is definitely one of my favorite drawing tools. It's so convenient to use uh, this to add whites, to add highlights instead of using masking fluid. And you can use the white gel pen uh, outdoors very easily. All right, so if you guys have any questions regarding urban sketching or sketching in general, let me know in the comment section below. And if you want to check out more free tutorials, I have 100 over free videos on my YouTube playlist. The link will be in the video description below, as well as link to my Patreon page where you can support me and check out even more detailed tutorials. Uh, Patreon, by the way, is a monthly subscription service where you can pledge a certain dollar amount to support the artist that you like. And it is with your support that I am able to create so many videos on my YouTube channel. So thank you, patrons, for your support. All right, see you guys in the next video. Bye.